Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, we'll just go uh, section by section like we've done in the past. I know um, just looking at the final number, we're looking at 4560707 as the final number for the budget uh, with a default of 4551427 which is a difference of 4.5%. So moving forward in the administration section, I think ones that will probably jump out at you a little bit will be the line for rentals and leases. We significantly reduced that. Um, some of the issues that we were utilizing aren't in existence anymore, and we were trying very, very hard to get this budget down uh, as close as we could to the default number to try to move it forward and get a budget that will pass. So that was part of the decision making that we had to do with that. That includes our user fees for things like spots and the NCI computer. So when we stop cars, when we run that information, there is a fee with that, but there's also associated other fees that we'll find other ways to, uh, to deal with that. The only other big change in that area was <coughs> computer support, which is down 15.85. It's not as big a number because it's not that big of a number to begin with. And computer support is our support from our information management corporation, which is our data system, uh, law package support, annual internet service, hardware support, software support. We're just going to reduce and really cut close in those areas. And there aren't any really significant changes other than that, if there's any questions in the administrative section. Nothing? Okay. Oh, actually, so I, sure. you might, and I'm sorry if you already said that the overtime wages cut under administration. Okay. It, it, you, brought, you presented 18300 and it was taken down at 5500 Correct, it, but that reflects also what we budgeted last year. Okay, all right. So that was, yes, it cut from my proposal, but we just went back to last year's number okay. to get the number Thank to fit. You. Well, where are we? Do you have a question? Yes. Then speak up. All righty. On page 34. Um, well, we're going to go through the whole budget like we did with... Well, she wants to speak now. Well, I hope we're good. That's what we're here for. I know, but we went through the whole line by line, and then we went back and asked questions about the different Why don't sections. we just let her speak? Okay. Wow, that's that's really moot. On page um, 34, Chief, yep. you want expendable office supplies. You have a spelling, little spelling thing there. Okay. Get rid, get rid of the A and put an E in there. I will take care of that. Thank I you. I can you, say you, now. You, you catch me every year. I do. Yes. I do it on purpose. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that you're being lavish again with prisoner food. A whole hundred dollars. <laughs> Is that why people who've been arrested once don't come back? Well, it's a, one of those numbers that's going to stay the same and maybe one day we're going to eliminate it because the world's changing and we really don't arrest as many people as we used to. We try to find a way to get them somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> so we do keep it in the, in the rare occasion we need to get some food. <laughs> Computer support. I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked Chief A. Uh, are your um, computers being scanned or and checked out from time to time to make sure you don't have any intrusion in there, anybody tinkering with your system? I can't get into specifics, obviously, in an open forum, because right. a lot of the things we have access to are what we call CGIS uh, compliant. Right, but if somebody tries putting, inserting bad stuff on your... I am confident that we would be able to defeat that, or we would, we'd be identified very quickly. I mean, there was a time period where police departments, other government entities were having their stuff basically stolen and held hostage. Yeah. I'm pretty confident that we're, we're in a safe place with that. Yeah, because we had a little scare with the fire department earlier, and I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that our departments are mm -hmm. keeping clean computers. Yes. Um, 27, brain cramp. S-E-R-T, help me with the initials. Oh, CERT, Seacoast yep. Emergency Response Team. 
That's our local we're tactical team. Where are we? That we're members too. We're, I'm not, we're, we're are we on administration still or what? I'm going through page by page. I've made notes. I I've, why don't you do? She wants to speak. I've, Rick, I think the only thing where I would ask is I was going to go section oh, by section. I know. Yeah. For it, but so she's, she's the a little one bit that's ahead. Uh, well, willing to sections, speak. Uh, some sections didn't bother me at all, so I. Okay, but I haven't presented those yet. Okay. I, if you wouldn't mind, well, let me, then go right ahead. Let me said. present those sections, yeah. and then I'll answer the questions that's if that works. That's what we did with the last speaker. Okay. And you'll raise the amount in prisoner food. What I'll, if doing? that's what you think I need to do, ma'am, I will. Can we keep going, please. So, crime control and investigations. What happened we are coming in at 705-335. We cut that uh, slightly with the manager's level to 703-960. I don't believe in crime control there was anything glaring other than you look at the part-time wages. We just made some adjustments there to reflect what we're spending in those areas. Trying again to get to that default number. Uniform allowance, you'll see, uh, it was cut by 100%. That was the um, mono patrol boots, things like that, breaches that we have no intentions of adding any new riders. So we just zeroed that line out for this year. And supplies and expenses, we cut by 42.65. But again, if you look at the actual dollar amount, it's not a big number. So any questions on con crime control and investigations? Okay. Uniform allowance, you would you cut, did you just touch, say, is that what you were talking about? Because yes, mounted patrol, they have to have special equipment, like the boots that they use to ride or the breeches that they use to ride. We zeroed that out because I have no intentions of uh, adding any riders this year or any new supplies. Okay. They're, pretty, they're in pretty good shape. And part-time wages, you went more with the five-year average we tried to move it towards the averages a little bit more what we're seeing you know again we're in a kind of a transitional stage within the department if you look at going back 10 years we've lost a minimum of 11 officers working oh. part-time oh. in that time period just they're hmm. not names but positions so that's caused a reduction in the amount we ask for i mean we we're allowed to have up to 70 officers but i don't budget for 70. i try to be realistic to what i can predict sitting here in July of this year, what I'm going to have working the July of 4th next year, and I'll share some, we, uh, re we had a test on Saturday, I'll share those figures with you at the end, where we're still in that cycle of trying, we're having great difficulties finding people to come in and work. Okay, um, my only question would be, you know, that's the five-year average, that that's what it was this year and stuff, is that what you need? You, you, Which, uh, Jim, just want to make sure which one you're talking about. Crime control. Yeah. That's the evidence tech. I apologize. Okay. That's a, that's a standardized number. That's uh, a part-time position that comes in and helps the detective so they don't have to catalog all the evidence in the evidence room and take that back and forth to the lab and contact. Okay. That's so that, that position that you guys are All right. Yeah. So that would be I different. apologize. I thought we were talking okay. about the Okay. No problem. Wages. No problem. Thank you. Rusty. Also, thank you. Um, I want to say that I appreciate um, all of the uh, work that you've done here on the budget. I think you've done a good job. Mrs. Thank Wolseley. You. Uh -huh. um, page 37, because I'm going by your page breakdowns. That's Thank you. Who is the armorer now in the Hampton Police Department, and how? what's the status of the Glocks since Captain Barnard and I knocked ourselves out to get them? Armors, we have many. Uh, okay. Mo most of our folks that are, are firearms instructors and trainers, our use of force trainers, okay. are all armors. So you don't have a specific no. person handling it? You're spreading it no, out? we spread that out. And, and how are we making out with the Glocks? Are you having to replace them frequently? How, how is the department no, doing? I don't know if you recall, it was last year the year before, we engaged in a gun-for-gun -gun swap with Glock uh, USA. They replaced all of our old weapons that had Good. been here since okay. the 90s. I forgot that. For zero dollars. It was a straight up exchange of those, those weapons. We got the brand new generation fours. In addition, we picked up 15 new, it was 15 new weapons from a federal agency that was switching to a different weapon system. Good. And you remember I came for, forward for the board uh, mm -hmm. several months ago 
to request permission to accept those. So we're okay. we're doing very well with our so weapons. So you're systems. up to date on the weapons yes. and everybody's qualified and all yes. that good stuff. Okay. Um, let's see. Vehicle. Vehicle replacement. I have to commend you because every year you don't you never have old vehicles out in the yard rusting like Public Works does. So you are doing your routine replacement of we, your... We try to replace three vehicles every year. Uh, as you recall, last year there was a delay with the factory, so we didn't get the, uh, the 2018s until 2019, and we'll also be getting three vehicles in very soon. Uh, the only change we had is this year, we're, we're instead of three cruisers, we're doing two cruisers and a cruiser pickup truck. For many of the things that we haul around and have to pull around, it is a speed rated cruiser. It's just in the form a, a format of a pickup truck, an F-150. But you're but you are have you're keeping your vehicles up to date, and you're not having any old junks sitting around. You're you're using no. you're using this replacement system. Average lifespan of a cruiser in the department is about three years. Yeah, it lasts about three yeah. years. I would guess. Okay, on page 38. Ma'am, I think we've gotten beyond uh, crime yes. control and investigations. I have a question on the Small, Well, okay. Well, I was just going to run through the stuff I've got. I haven't got much more. But okay, Regina, just, do you want to ask something? Hmm. Just on crime control and investigations, I just want to make a note. I, I don't have any uh, qualms with what happened, but for I, regular wages and holiday pay, those are the direct results of the contract negotiations that we had last year. Yes, right? most of the, where you see increases, as you remember, uh, the town voted uh, to accept the contract with the Hampton Police Association, both Correct. sergeants and patrolmen. So many of the increases you're gonna see in wages have a ripple effect out into those other areas with Correct. sick time, holiday, whatever it is, where we have to backfill people, that's where that effect comes from. Okay, perfect, thank yep. you. Mrs. Wolseley, yeah. something else? Um, oh, yeah. I, well, I went through the budget. Oh. Um, page 38. Uh, 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 <laughs> Deputy Hobbs. Are we still in c crime control? Are we going to stay I by section or we're going to get all messed I up here? I went through the whole budget. So well, I'm going let, page Let by him page. go by section and then ask each section. Let's not have chaos here. Well, I don't see chaos. Your pages are numbered. Oh. What's the problem? Because, ma'am, we're in crime control. I, I, I would well, like then to, that's fine. I'd you like to present section by section. And okay. And ask question based Go on right the section. It would just Thank be you. easy for us to manage. Live it Thank up. you. Okay. Any other questions for crime control and investigations? No. no. Thank you. What page are you on? So, moving on to traffic. Traffic okay. control and patrol. Page 39. 39. 36. 36? I'm sorry, 36. My apologies. Dramatic changes, court wages, we did drop uh, by 33% simply looking at the five-year average and one of the other things that with all the new changes we've had to the court system with felonies first and all the other issues going on there's fewer needs for officers to appear in court so that's really accounts for that dramatic drop sick leave coverage is down 63 percent that's just a reflection of what we're seeing uh, based on the five-year average and what we saw particularly last year one of the things you have to look at, even though we use the five-year average, is in the five years I've been chief, I've hired 10 full-time police officers, which is an unprecedented rate over the last 50 years. Just as we're at a turning point in the department, there's a lot of turnover coming, yeah. a lot of people do to retire, and that's why we're seeing those numbers go down a little, because the folks coming in don't have any accrued sick time. They have very little, so they don't use it. Okay. Or you won't let them get sick. We try. We try to hire healthy people. Uniform allowance is 58%. That reflects, again, uh, specialty equipment for motorcycle operators this time as opposed to mounted. Same thing, it's the boots are very expensive, helmets, leather coats. Oh, yeah. We don't anticipate uh, that we're going to be putting any new folks on on the motorcycles. Just at this particular time, it would be yeah. difficult to do with the staff. The lack of experience we have in staffing, that usually goes to offices that have been around for a while. So that is the reductions in that area. 
Um, and replacement equipment, we just knocked that down a piece, but that's not a big number. So other than that, if there's any questions. Mrs. Right. Walsley. You're on page 36. Dave, you got another spelling there. Under personal days, cost to replace sergeants and patrolmen, it should be plural. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Waddell. I don't want to get into, you know, very specific things, but under traffic control and, and patrol, that would come into exactly what? That's the people you see out every day patrolling your streets in a black and white cruiser. That's really who we're talking okay. about. Okay. So that would be people that would, would be involved in patrolling like up in North Beach and stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where you say you need more people. I couldn't help but see that article. I was quoted in that article talking about the issues up there on the North Shore, which has with the growth we're experiencing, it's picking up. People have discovered the North Shore. Trying to keep up with the needs in different neighborhoods um, has been a daunting task for us. It's a challenge. Just we don't have the personnel we, we need to keep up with all the complaints we're receiving. So when the complaints first started surfacing, I had some contact and I have a lot of friends up in the North Shore area and we were talking about it. And at the time, in the, about the middle of July, I had run a uh, statistical analysis. We had made over 300 traffic stops in that stretch of highway, the numbered streets, mm -hmm. into, into July. That's significant coverage. On top of, we've changed the way we work with the state police on the weekends. We usually send a trooper or two up to the North Shore to augment our, get our folks up there mm -hmm. because they're great at the motor vehicle stuff. So I don't have numbers for them, but I know when I drove up there on the Friday and Saturday I came out, there would be, at one end there's a Hampton cruiser stopping a car, and on the other end coming back the other way, there's a state trooper stopping a car. So. There is a lot of activity up there uh, as far as law enforcement presence, but the problem is, is you can't be there every moment. Mm -hmm. We had that incident yeah. where a young man just just hit the gas real hard and lost control pulling out of a parking spot. Fortunately, didn't go through the house. Um, yeah. And we see those things up there because we do attract a young, youthful crowd up there, like we all were at one time, and you go <laughs> up there and you hang out with your friends, and unfortunately, Sometimes the mob mentality takes place and people make bad decisions. <coughs> I wish we could be up there every moment of the day uh, to try to solve those problems, but I also wish we could do that on Moulton Road. I wish I could do that yeah. on Tidemill Road. I mean, yeah. think exactly. of the folks that have come before this board looking for relief from the police department, and we hold those um, community meetings to deal with their problems. We are looking to schedule one for the North Shore. We're in the midst of trying to put that together right. now, and hopefully we can come up with some answers. But do you feel this budget adequately addresses what you need? That's, that's, it. that's what my question is. Well, I mean, that's a hard answer. Our, our, our hallmark has always been excellence. Yeah. Can I look at you, anybody and tell you that if this is the budget we're going to work with this year, that we're going to maintain that excellence in service? Um, in most areas, yes. But as far as addressing every need, no, we'll be adequate at best. It's just not enough officers. When you look at the growth in this community, we've highlighted never a number of times between police, fire, and public works, the things that we're experiencing, the staffing levels are not keeping up with the growth we're experiencing. So with that in mind, when, when you look at the police department operation, when you were able to see a police officer, whatever frequency that we, we were, it's less likely to see that because we just don't have the personnel. You know, and it's a combination of things. It's not just money. It's really the staffing issues that trying to find qualified people to come to work as a part-time police officer to start their careers here uh, is getting more challenging. We ran the test Saturday and, you know, it's, we're down to 12 interviews and we started the interviews today where in the past we'd be booked for interviews, you know, five days for that week, you know, and do close to 100 interviews. We're, yeah. we're, we got 12. Uh -huh. So times have changed and we just have to try to manage it. I think I said that the last time I presented my quarterly update, we're, we are at that point. The days of doing more or less are over. We're going to be doing less with less, and that's just a reality until we turn a corner here. So, okay. Thank you. No. Rusty? The, uh, with the courthouse moving back into town, has that shown, seen any relief for you at all? Um, well, it, it was great to, you know, and I, I helped uh, Nancy Stiles going up to a couple of the meetings to get the court back because it's just one of those things where mm -hmm. we're the busiest law enforcement entity working out of that court yeah. and having them, our folks down in Seabrook as much as we were because remember it's not just trials when you have to have a warrant signed mm -hmm. all kinds of different yeah. paperwork that means they have to drive down route, a busy route one into Seabrook yeah. 
then come back and trying to, you know, it's just preferable to have the officers in town. So I'd say yes, probably not as much as we thought because, again, we're not going to court as much as we used to. Right. But it has been a good relief to have it back in town. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Wolsey? Yes. Uh, under the, uh, let's see, at the top of page 39, under training and recruitment, just for, uh, for information, this line yeah, item reflects these. tuition costs for specialized schools and seminars, blah, blah, FBI and all that stuff. What is Cooper's Institute? I'm not familiar with that. that. <laughs> It has to do with physical fitness, so I'll let the physically fit go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper's Institute is the standard set by that the state uses. That David, are, speak a lot. Uh, you're so are, polite and you're so quiet, but holler a little bit. Thank you. Officers are required to uh, take PT tests every three years to maintain oh. their certification. So it's officers that were hired after a certain, uh, I think it's 2001, are required to take the PT test. And Cooper's is sets the standard for based on age how many how fast you have to run a mile and a half how many push-ups you have to do sit-ups so. that's good to know okay I was just nosy and then you have um, let's see your ammo purchase and summer coverage that's the I, did I go too far on page 40 yeah. Yeah. we're almost there uh, Regina, oh, did okay. you have any no, no. I just have, yeah, I just have uh, one question on traffic control and control. Um, so holiday pay and career incentives, we can do them both at the same time. What you're budgeting for compared to the zero dollars as a 831, can you just explain yeah. that? Yes, so okay. thank you for asking because that always gets people to treat, why have we not spent a dollar on that? Those are contractual obligations that do not come out uh, until the first pay period of December. Okay. So talk to me the second pay period, that should be pretty much emptied out. Okay, <laughs> perfect. And the other question I have, just to touch on, I know North Beach and all the things you yep. have going on everywhere. As far as North Beach goes, could maybe just putting some lighting down there for late at night? Lighting is, uh, you know, we've been talking about what, the take LEDs. a step back, what could we do better up there? And one of the things I want to do is I'm going to approach uh, state parks folks because one of the things we know is when the f folks show up with these car clubs they're not feeding the meter the minute the minute the, <laughs> the yeah. meter patrol shows up and we're standing there with them so they're not getting harassed these folks leave so we want to try to better coordinate the times that they come up to the North Shore area the problem they have is their staffing gets reduced significantly as the night wears on. Mm -hmm. So right. there may only be one or two people on, and they're generally down at the main beach walking down to the CPA lot in the south end. Um, if we could try to get some cooperation from them to keep a couple folks on, maybe you know, up to 10 o'clock at night uh, on the busier <coughs> nights so or when we know these car clubs are meeting up there, to try to go up there, and if they enforce the parking issues up there, I think that would curb some of the activity. But I've heard this stuff going on like really late at night. Like two or three o'clock. The There's night. always been stuff going on late at night up at that beach because people yeah, people go up. There, I mean, let's I face mean, it. We all people complaining about it. We grew up <laughs> here, and, and I understand that we, you know, yeah. people, you know, fireworks are going off at two o'clock in the morning. Right. Uh, you know, we had an incident where somebody yeah. went up on the wall and discharged a firearm out over the ocean. They do things like that when they are confident. Not only the police aren't there, but right. there's no other witnesses there. So that's when some of those crazier type of things happen, and it's the unfortunate part. You buy a house and you, you want to be right there by the, the quiet of the ocean, but it's Ocean yeah. Boulevard in Hampton, so that's really right. not yeah. going to happen during those summer months. Um, and then the things that go on over the wall at night, we try to get out and deal with it. If we see a car and we don't see people around at the offices, we'll get out and shine a light down on the beach. Um, but a lot of those nuisance things truly are the state parks issues. They're right. not truly no, ours. We try to help, but not everything is a violation of law. It's just they're being loud and being a pain in the butt down there. Whose responsibility is that to try to do more lighting and more people present out there to prevent those things from happening? Right. I think we need to probably talk to the state park a little bit by helping us a little. They were they came up with a great idea on the Fourth of July. We had a couple of park rangers, believe it or not, oh. came down from the North Country. Yeah, they sorry. have they have bona fide law enforcement. They have Good. full authority in the state park, and they walked the wall for us, and it really helped curtail a lot of the fireworks complaints that we had. I personally think that they have some responsibility, a lot of responsibility yeah, that they're yeah. ignoring at this point. Hmm. So you can continue. Um, any other questions then on 
traffic control and patrol. If not, we can move to training. Please do. So training, we did see a, an increase in the consultants. Um, again, it's not a big number as far as dollars, but it's a 71% increase. The consultants we're talking about are folks that help provide with training seminars, trying to keep our officers abreast of case laws or any other issues going on. We're, we're fortunate we are able to host a lot of those at the PD. Um, we've highlighted our association with the FBI leader group uh, and folks like that coming in, but there is an associated cost when we have to travel or we have to go to training elsewhere, so that's what that reflects. Mrs. Wolseley, do you think that the facility that you have in the public works yard is still suitable for your firearms training? Are you you're using? Yes, I do. Um, if you remember last year, we spent some money um, reclaiming the the backstop, the farm, yes. uh, and uh, public works I can't compliment them enough for the the. They went out of their way to make that work for us. Um, so it is, I'd say we're very fortunate. We probably have the best range set up in the seacoast of New Hampshire. We have our own, we're able to maintain it. Um, you know, we've had those issues in the past where it was disturbing our neighbors, so we've really tried to curtail that. We keep our night uh, shooting to a minimum. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of the night shooting, we simulate it, we go over to the Seabrook Power Plant, it's kind enough to uh, loan us their indoor range where they can control the lighting for us. So we've taken a lot of steps to make, you know, maintain the range, but also give relief to the, the abutters from the noise that it does create. So no, I, I'd say we're doing very well there at the range. We put that into play in my first term. I and remember. I'm very pleased yep. to see what we had, that we have been able to continue to use that and have our own yep. training area. I think we just have to stay on top. We went over 40 years before we reclaimed, so there was a lot of lead in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking of like a, we probably at the 10 year mark, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to look at that again. Yeah. We are gonna come to you probably here this month or next month. We haven't fenced it in yet. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna propose, depending on what we have left in the budget, either taking what we have money in the budget to put the fence up mm -hmm. or come back to you with the cruisers yeah. and buy one of the, or two of the cruisers out of Fund 26 so we can fund the fence. Yeah. I'm very proud yeah. of that facility. And ha do you get any feedback from neighbors? We walked Elaine Street to explain to the people that there'd be bang, bang, bang from time to time to tell them why we had the range put in. And I'm wondering, because they're pretty close yeah, to you. No, do you do, does anybody call you up and say, stop shooting? Not like it used to be. We used to get those calls every time we were out there, but yeah. we've really modified the times and the restrictions yeah. we place on the shooting. Um, on occasion, we would have the CERT team up there firing, and they, they fire the rifles. All their rifles now have suppressors on them, so it doesn't make the noise it used to make. Mm -hmm. So we've made a lot of adjustments um, to try to make it more user-friendly for the officers, but also accommodate uh, the issues that it was causing in the neighborhood. So I think we've achieved a, a pretty good state of where we are. And I think this is a pretty important uh, aspect of the to have this facility for the police department. Oh, absolutely. I don't, it would be a very difficult proposition for us if we didn't mm -hmm. have our own range. The money and the expense it would take us to either, you know, yeah. have to rent yeah. the Seabrook Station range or yeah. go up to Six Sour, up in Epping. Right. It would be a costly endeavor. And then again, there's all those officers out of town again. After seeing the officers in the 70s, many of them who had never shot what yeah, about weapon. tonight? Do you have any more questions about the budget this evening? I have a final question for the last page. Okay, I don't think we're quite there yet. Okay. Uh, so that's training. Yep. Now we're into support services. And that covers your areas, uh, your part-time special officers, your summer coverage, and all of those accounts. Um, the only dramatic one I see percentage wise would be the court wages again and that's the wages for the part-time officers if they would have to appear in court it's a 33 percent uh, reduction uh, but it's a small number money wise sick leave coverage same thing uh, we just adjusted that to go with a five-year average and personal days same same type of issue 
And the other one that I would highlight, I know because it's going to come up, is our utilization of outside agencies. That's, uh, that program was originally designed for that time period of the preseason, uh, mainly before the 4th of July when our newer officers had not joined us or had very little experience mm -hmm. to help the staffing uh, issues we were having because the state police was also having difficulty with their staffing. You can see that uh, I think that number is a little bit higher than reflected right there because of some of the bills come in later in the summer or later in the year. Um, but there was a significant decrease in the use of the outside agencies simply because we had a very cold and wet spring. Yeah. So it did not necessitate where we didn't need to bring people in, we didn't. And I'll take any other questions. Questions, Mrs. Wolves. Yeah, final question. That's going to make you happy. I'm fine, answer. <laughs> Under building maintenance, you have cameras on the entrance and exit or just on the entrance to the police station? We have somewhere over... No, but I mean, the, to see who's coming in and going out. We have, like, we have cameras all around the building. And do they all work? Before, um, well, routinely they do. Once in a while you'll have a failure. Something will go down. The dispatchers will notice because they monitor the screens. But you you're... You're keeping on top of it and oh, yes, the that, camera goes. For our liability, we have to see who's coming in out of the building and what's going on. Now, if there's a problem and you want to see if John Doe signed in on Wednesday the 15th at, at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, can you take pictures or can you produce pictures from those cameras? There's two ways we can, we can verify somebody if they came to work is mm -hmm. through the video. Right. We can go back and look at the timing of it. Okay. Although it only, uh, we only save about 30 days worth of video. It only stores about, and then it automatically starts rewriting. Okay. Okay. The other way we do it is we have an electronic pad system to enter the building. So every employee has an ID fobs. that's chipped. Yeah. And they put that in there, and that will register that. And, you know, when I come in in the morning, it will say, you know, Chief okay. Sawyer came in, and yeah. that's the time he came in. Okay. I was just nosy. So <clears throat> noted. So that's it. <laughs> Regina, any questions? For support services. Are we doing animal control now? Not yet. Not quite yeah. yet. Yeah. Mm. Quite yet. Um, Jim, Mark, did you have what? any questions? I just have one. For part-time special officer wages, that increase is 5.97%. Is that because of uh, what we have to do? The contractual issues, again, when you... Um, Remember, the contract for the police department <coughs> also includes the part, they are part of the collective bargaining right. unit. So when you look at that, you're actually looking at two years worth of wages go, uh, increases because that first year, it's in the Warren article, so it's not reflected in the, uh, the budget. It rolls into next year's, so that's why it seems yeah. like, you know, it's bigger than the 2.8% they got. But when you add that up together, that's when it really, it kind of trickles out that second year of the contract. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. Jim? Uh, just support that this is the your part-time people right for the summer yes it's adequate no okay well I, mean, I think that we really you know you need I'd, be I'd be lying if I told you it was adequate right now I'm looking at I have 32 on the roster um, again we uh, we had 12 interviews on schedule for this week um, historically we'll lose at least four of those folks during the process so if we were able to gain eight, but the problem is, is between now and then, now and the 4th of July, when, you know, the big day of the year, mm -hmm. we'll lose half of the people that we brought on last year. I'll give yeah. you an example. The class of 2018 was 12 people, which was a pretty good class for us. Yeah. We have three left. Yeah. Now, we were fortunate enough, we hired two of them full time, but Salem, Manchester, Nashua, Hooksett, you know, just name the place. They, they, they know the quality product we turn out. Yeah. Um, we do, we vet them just like a full-time employee, so you're not going to lose somebody at the last second because of something they found in the background check because we do a pretty thorough background on them. So that's a constant cycle we're facing. Whatever we hire, we're going to lose at least half mm -hmm. the next year. We're lucky yeah. if we get a summer out of them. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys do a great job during the summer. And, I mean, with police presence, it helps. Yep to keep things calm, you know, without going overboard. So, I mean, that, that's such a crucial part of, of your department. Mm. You do a good job with Thank what you have. Rusty? Nope. All set. And did you want to continue? Uh, the only thing we have left is the police station and building, but those are just kind of the built-in costs yeah. of 
you know, the wages obviously for a custodian. We uh, we did have a new custodian join us. He, he's working out great. Okay. Uh, Billy Gay retired, and you know we wished him well. And he's a great guy. But uh, we were very fortunate uh, to find our new our new janitor, and he's fitting right in and getting things done. So that's that's essential. And what the about the mounted patrol? Mounted patrol that comes back to. Um, Support services in there, uh, pardon me, crime control. Mounted patrol, uh, we do have an item after this. We can probably discuss that more in depth after we're done with the budget. Mm -hmm. We do have an item okay. we, we do yep. need to vote for from you guys, so if that is possible, we okay. can hold that conversation until then. Uh, the next part is... The only thing I saw was on the stations and buildings is it's going up. Is that because yeah. of the stations getting older? Yeah, one of some of the things we're looking at, we were going to try to try to move forward with some projects this year. Um, we've been in there now since 2005. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we need to change countertops in the officers' room. Chairs need to be replaced. Carpet's going to have to be replaced. Right. Mm -hmm. um, some of the wall paper and the stuff that was up there is in the deputies yeah. is just peeling down off the wall. So yeah. within the next several years, uh, I think I. Propose just something. Maintenance, basically. Yeah, but a lot of those things, if you did it up, there was a pretty good number, and we talked about maybe using capital improvement for that because it, a lot of the stuff, when you add it up in the aggregate, exceeds the hundred thousand dollar threshold. So probably not this year, uh, but come back next year, and we ought to take a hard look at that and try to get some of that stuff done before. Just don't want it, you know. We spent a lot of money down there, and we have a lot of people come to that PD for training, and a lot of people really give us. Great uh, kudos for how we run things down there, but if you start when they get run down, then we're not going to have that, and we mm. won't be able to do the training in-house. Yeah. So, I think next year we're probably going to have to take a real hard look at that. Okay, thank you. All right. Animal control. Yep. We're a little bit up from last year, uh, but it's about a 3% change from the department head to the uh, versus the actual budget. So you're looking at, we started at 57,669, and that was reduced to 53,669 with a default of 54,786. That's mostly the regular wages, um, some uniform issues, and the associated uh, benefits. Mrs. Wolseley. I think we all remember Pete McKinnon. Fondly sometimes. Pete. <laughs> Fondly so when sometimes. When he put a chicken in my office, I wasn't too happy about that. But. We, we loved him. <laughs> but now with the new uh, officer, are you finding that the response is still um, good, not just a daytime response, but if there's a problem, you know, if there's a gorilla in the backyard or something, will the animal control officer respond, uh, you know, off hours, sit in the middle of the night, if it's a real emergency? Absolutely. We, we find, um, it was kind of ironic when I left the PD today to come home, mm -hmm. and uh, it was coming up my street because a deer got hit down the end of the street. Ah. After his normal working hours. Yeah. So if he's in town, he will absolutely come out, and the officers like Pete was great at it, and Tony has picked up, you know, he's from there 24 his, hours. If, he, if he's in town, he's coming. Uh, he'll try to help you. And what, one of the things we've tried to do is try to expand to help people. Sometimes it may not traditionally be what our animal control officer does, but we have a, a growing community of seniors, and sometimes they yeah. have issues like a, a bat in the house, which is not necessarily what he's supposed to be doing. But he happens to be very well trained in dealing with animals, and yeah. he was a canine handler for many years. So I would say we go above and beyond with that program from from what it was. And Pete did an excellent job. It's just where where we're experiencing it now. Uh, right. Some of the stuff we're seeing in town with the growth and with the people coming in, the problems they call us with it, just kind of where did that one come from? So yeah. we we try to help everybody we can. I'm just concerned if somebody has a, a problem with an animal, say, in the middle of the night. Well, one of the things you see him doing is the wildlife issues. That's fish, traditionally fishing game. That's not the animal control officer. Uh -huh. But there's such a shortage of fishing game officers that, you know, we had a, a deer hit today, right. and something has to be done about it, and you can't wait two hours for somebody to come down out of the north country to deal with it, with a deal, you know, deer thrashing on the side of the highway with a broken leg. We have to, we have to do something. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's good to have somebody in town that's trained how to do okay. it and it's willing to do it. Because so. I think that's an important part of the police department. I couldn't agree with you more. 
Any other questions about this part? Seeing none. And I think the only other one. Doing parking. Huh? Yep, parking is next. Parking. I've got parking. Oops. So we are up a little bit, and the real. It's really quick and easy. You remember last year we talked about um, some changes we were going to make when the police department took over the uh, parking lots two years uh, mm -hmm. last year. Uh, yeah, last year. Right. We took over. So one of the changes I'd like to do is combine our parking enforcement personnel, the folks that would drive around in the, the yellow shirts and mm -hmm. write our tickets in our town lots. I want to combine them with our personnel that manage the lots because we found out as the changes of the seasons, a lot of these folks are either seniors or young young adults that are going to school. Trying to find people to work the lot sometimes could be difficult. Uh -huh. So if I can utilize those folks under the same budget, and we've done it a couple of times, it would just be easier to manage if it was one unified budget. Uh -huh. So all the parking functions of the police department being the lots and the enforcement would be in this budget. So that would be taken, so you'll notice in the police budget, there was no parking enforcement money in that. Uh, okay. It's now in this budget. And I, Mr. Manager, I don't know if that requires a vote of the board to accept that change. Part of the budget. So it's part of the budget. Okay. okay. Are they the same uh, pay rate? I believe they are. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any else. other questions? So I have a question on this. Regina. We're talking about the parking enforcement unit budget, right? That's yeah. what everything is in there now. That includes enforcement, parking enforcement. I think you have, because I was just going to add it up combined. Right. 67 So your part-time wages and your seasonal wages include your officers, right. your parking officers. That you parking have enforcement around, officers, yep. Plus the people that are in plus the Plus the lots. people in the lots. So the combination of those two are $87,000, and I mean, we know the, what, parking tends to bring in for revenues has been a... I know we're having a good year. Substantially higher We're having that. a good year. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I think that uh, sounds perfect. Thanks. So what do you want to do, make a, uh, do a motion to add, or yeah, maybe... You don't need to. It's, it's part of the budget process. Did oh, you have okay. any other further questions, Mrs. Wilson? No, thank you. Okay, anything else? We no. I have one emergency more. Management. You guys like to give me all different kinds of budgets. Emergency management. Uh, emergency management um, you remember we requested that for ever in a day the budget had been $1,000, which just wasn't realistic. Mm -hmm. um, so what we had asked for the, the funds that we get reimbursed from uh, New Hampshire Homeland Security for our participation in the Seabrook drills, that those monies would go into fund uh, emergency management. That includes things um, we do have to bring people in sometimes during the drills on overtime. We do have to feed them. Uh, there's a number of things we do with that money and any improvements we make over at the fire station to the EOC area, we could do out of that if we don't have a grant for it. So, so the question. civil defense uh, expenses are matched by the revenues? Yes. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Okay, and the and only other issue we do have patrol. is the issue of the model patrol. Um, I wanted to bring to the attention of the board that um, our newest horse that we bought, I think it was 2018, Rocky. Yeah. It was a 10 year old gelding, Tennessee Walker, which is what we use. Yeah. Um, Rocky's just not working out. Um, yeah. We've tried, um, he's regressing. And we've had good luck with most of the horses, but this isn't uh, uncharted waters. We've had this happen in the past. With, with Dennis and John uh, with the training and stuff. And uh, he, we had an outside uh, instructor come in and make an assessment. And they said it'd be a good trail horse, but I would not ride it down on Hampton Beach with all those yeah. kids because you could have a problem. And we concurred with that. So I would ask the board to take a vote to declare Rocky surplus property, giving me the authority to find a good home for him. And if good. there are any revenue now in our, on our offer, we have never received revenue for a horse before that we declared surplus property. Mm -hmm. If we were able to, I would just ask that we be able to utilize those funds to offset the cost of, of a purchase of a new horse. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will so move, Mr. Chairman, if I'll you second accept it. that. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank and that's you all we have much. for you tonight.